Mason, the last time we had uh, much to do with the Eclipse was, well, not the best of times, to say the least. It's, uh, it's been through a turbulent genesis, but uh, there seems to be some opportunities now that uh, the dust has settled, and the aircraft seems to be under a more than, uh, shall we say, more conservative approach than we've seen before, and with a positive direction. So what's the future of the Eclipse? Well, you know, the future of the Eclipse is really bright, Jim. I mean, we're excited. I mean, I, uh, you know, we're so fortunate to be the new custodians of the Eclipse uh, EA500 jet aircraft. I mean, the prior company built and designed a fantastic aircraft. And, uh, you know, unfortunately, some market conditions and everything uh, made it a little problematic. But uh, we're here, we're strong, and we're going to support this product back into production. So we're excited. Well. It's always been our feeling it was one of the most visionary aircraft we have personally seen for the light uh, business market or for the high-end GA market, whichever way you prefer to look at it. And it, it just had such potential. Will that potential finally be realized? Oh, absolutely. You know, uh, fleet utilization of the 260 planes that are out there flying is, you know, tripled since we took over last September. We've got parts and service back in place. We're making plans for production. We're selling refurbished aircraft, and uh, people are enjoying the economical efficiency of an Eclipse uh, jet. It is the most efficient form of jet travel in the world today. Well, I had a fellow uh, at a, it was funny, we were at a little country flying, bunch of tail draggers, bunch of this and that, and an Eclipse owner had to go over and bend my ear because he was bragging about a flight that he had made recently. Uh, this, is, this was an old, uh, if, I, if I recall, he was a DC-10 captain and retired and so forth, and he was just going on and on about his numbers, and that's the thing that is so compelling about this aircraft. All the numbers that were spouted in the beginning, everybody said, no, can't be done, can't be done, can't be done. The airplane's realizing those numbers. We are, we are performing to the book and performing to the numbers that were published, and that's very exciting. And that's why we're so proud of this product and, and again, fortunate to, uh, to really be able to operate it and sell it and uh, get it out into the marketplace. We're very excited about the future. Let's talk about the cardinal aspects of aircraft ownership, the things that you're concerned about, training, insurance, maintenance, and overall parts support. How are those issues being addressed right now? Well, we'll start, I'll start with the latter, the parts support. Uh, we now have all the parts in, uh, in full support and available for the aircraft, so we're excited about that. That was our first and, and highest priority thing. Uh, training support is now back in place. We've now moved the simulators from Albuquerque, New Mexico to Simcom down in Orlando, Florida, and they're doing a stand-up job. They've agreed on a long-term commitment to stand up the simulators, upgrade them to the current functionality of the plane, and to support simulator use. And what that does is that bring, brings us into the insurance arena, and now the insurance companies are saying this is the safest jet engine ever or jet plane ever introduced to aviation and uh, it's all because of the training program and the simulator training and now that the simulator training is back up and running the insurance companies are back writing policies on this and ensuring this plane at reasonable pricing so we're excited about that as well freedom through performance at Sirius performance is not simply the measurement of a single design parameter rather it's a total package it's optimum balance of speed, efficiency, comfort, safety, ease of flight, and quality. We call it Cirrus Flying 2.0. Aren't you ready to feel the freedom? As I understand, there's airplanes in the pipeline that you are going to complete and put up for sale. Uh, yes, right now what we're doing is we have some planes that we've bought back from the secondary market, we've refurbished them, we've added all the upgrades and modifications that weren't complete by the prior company, such as Fiki, flight into known icing, the ability for coupled autopilot to GPS approaches, things of that nature, back up to 41,000 feet in this plane, which we're excited about, that's a big deal, and we're selling those as what we call the total eclipse, which is the finished product, and we're real excited to sell this back into the market with full factory warranty support. Uh, which is what our new owners want to see. How is the market right now with, with uh, the used aircraft that are out there? I've, I'm, I've talked to a number of folks who basically said that, you know, this airplane is, is going to leave on my, you know, out of my cold, dead hands. They're just absolutely uh, you know, over the moon with what they've had with the airplane overall, even despite you know, some hard times. But what's the sales market like right now? The, for a while, the numbers were really depressed, but uh, from what I've seen lately, they seem to be coming back up. Yeah, the, the, uh, the pricing of the Eclipse and specific in the used market since we've uh, started supporting the product again is probably up close to a half a million dollars for aircraft, which we're real excited about. That's 25% of the value of the plane. The market in general, though, is soft, as you know. The used plane market, uh, we got up to 22% rate of planes for sale on the 
use market there worldwide, and that's trickled down to in the 17% range now. And there's a little bit of softness in the market. We need to get back to that 12% worldwide used market fleet for sale type number, and then uh, we'll start to see the rebound, but uh, it's it's getting there pretty quickly. So uh, the nice thing is the Eclipse is at the lowest point of the value chain. So we have a lot of jet owners on the higher side that have these four, five, and six million dollar planes that are stepping into an Eclipse just due to the efficiency and the cost structure of an Eclipse. They can get just where they want to be and instead of carrying around a bunch of empty seats. So there's a great place for us in the market. It's not for every mission, but it is for the majority of missions that most people travel uh, you know, across the country and across the world. Now, how do you envision developing the airplane from here overall uh, before we even get into a production question? Well, we're going to continue to add uh, functionality. I have 25 full-time engineers working on design and development issues. We're going to continue to improve the product that goes right across the board from avionics to uh, in-flight entertainment systems in the back of the plane. We're going to add it as feature-rich as possible. Uh, we're just adding a, a satellite telephone system into the plane. We'll be adding, uh, you know, uh, we've added all the XM weather and things of those features to the plane. And uh, more and more technology for the passenger comfort and for the pilot comfort and for the safety overall of the aircraft. So. Uh, we're focusing on that continual improvement as we march towards production. The beauty of the Release 9 system architecture is that you have two fully redundant integrated flight displays. Each has access to all the systems and data. Providing full redundancy and eliminating traditional reversionary modes, Release 9 allows either display to be configured as the PFD. Now your failure modes are much more manageable because you can continue to fly with the same familiar display symbology without the need to relearn composite modes you don't typically fly with. Avidyne's Integra Release 9 is truly the next generation in fully integrated flight deck technology. What's the relationship like right now with Pratt Whitney? Uh, fantastic. I will tell you, that company is phenomenal. They came, up, they came to us weeks before we acquired the company and said, we hear that it's, it sounds like you guys are going to be the heir apparent, and uh, we just want to tell you we're here to support you, we're here to help you, and we were, we're proud of our engine and we want it on more planes. So they've been fantastic with uh, Luke and, and all the guys up there at the Pratt Whitney team. I just can't say too much about them. Finally, the obvious question, production. What's the process, and, and if, if I could, and I realize it's kind of putting you in the corner here, what's the timeline look like? Well, I don't mind being asked the question because I won't answer it. But uh, <laughs> so I, I, I'm good there. Good yeah, but it, but it was a good try. But uh, no, we're going to bring the plane back into production. We're working on. Uh, we got a couple things. It's not money that's the problem. Uh, we've got to get the supply chain back in shape, which we're doing a very good job with. We've got some new parts that need to be certified again and, and up to date. So we're working on those challenges. Market demand needs to come back as well too. Just in the overall market, we know how the economy is right now. We've kept the factory ready to go. We have 500,000 square feet of production space exactly the way it was left the day that production stopped and I can turn it back on at any time. So we will produce the plane again and uh, it won't be in the not too distant future. Let me add one other question if you don't mind. Uh, the relationship between the FAA and Eclipse got pretty rocky at various points when outside factors really created a political maelstrom. How is the relationship now between Eclipse Aerospace and the FAA? I think it's good. I mean, they, they, they see we're the new kids on the block. We're, we want to do things the right way. I think the old company actually did things the right way as well, too. I think they were just doing things very, very fast, and, and it was a game-changing opportunity for both sides. I don't know that uh, it was quite as tumultuous as everybody thinks, but at the end, Eclipse did very well through that whole process. They've been very supportive. They're active with us, and uh, they're uh, visiting our shop, obviously, uh, often, and uh, we're visiting with them, and we keep an open dialogue, and uh, uh, they want to see Eclipse uh, succeed with us, so uh, I think it's good. Well, we look forward to seeing a whole lot more Eclipses in the air, as well as uh, continue to get these stories from the owners because the bragging rights are just fun to listen to. Well, thank you very much, Jim, and i got to tell you, I really appreciate everything you do for aviation. It's wonderful. Well, we've had a lot of fun uh, both uh, with, the, with the Eclipse project as well as the rest, and you know, it, when this whole thing came around and the numbers came out and so forth, you just couldn't but feel like there was a game changer in the process. And with the economy tanking and a number of other factors, it was such a disappointment at the time, but it sure is nice to see that there's a, uh, a new horizon we're here, we're here to stay, and we're going to have a lot of fun with this plane. So uh, look forward to talking to you for uh, many months in the future.